Because the final finish of a model can only be as smooth as what is underneath, proper primer coat is essential. So many modelers seem to struggle to achieve a smooth coat of primer with an airbrush, and many just give up and turn to an aerosol can. In reality, with the proper airbrush and technique, you should easily be able to surpass the results from an aerosol can and in turn provide a much better surface for the subsequent color coats. There are different materials available to use as a primer, and there always seems to be a fair amount of confusion on types of paint. So for a discussion of the different paint types and their properties, I strongly urge you to read over my page on paint found on my website. For the purposes of this video, I'm using a lacquer primer. Due to the restrictions on volatile organic compounds here in the U.S., we no longer have access to traditional lacquer products such as these. While similar, this generation of low VOC lacquer pretty much works the same for our modeling purposes. Lacquer in a spray can can be a bit chancy because of the absent or misleading labeling. The spray can lacquers that I use during construction are the two cans on the right. Looking over the labels, there's no indication that they're lacquer. The can on the left, although it says primer, is just typical gray solvent-based paint. The tip-off is the 10-minute drying time and no mention of sandability. In this case, the two cans on the right promise sandability, but they also mention a 10-minute drying time and are basically just solvent-based paint. The can on the left, however, is a lacquer. The giveaway here is the labeling is high build and filler primer. In any case, your nose and the knowledge of the behavior of the material are going to be your best guide as to what's in the aerosol can. If you're going to use a lacquer primer, you want to be careful to avoid using lacquer-based fillers such as these, because the coats of lacquer primer will soften the underlying filler, leading to that joint that never seems to disappear. While you can build up a pretty good thickness with lacquer primer, be aware that each subsequent coat is a solvent for the previous layers below. So if your goal is to build up a lot of primer, you need to alternate between dry and wet coats to minimize the depth to which the solvent is penetrating. So let's take a look at the use of an aerosol can and why it seems to provide reasonable results. Look at the width of the pattern and the amount of material being delivered. The heavy wide spray pattern and the amount of material allow you to put enough primer down to maintain a wet surface and minimize the buildup of overspray. The concept of overspray can be confusing. Most people think of overspray as what's left on the paper around the model. But overspray is that part of the spray pattern that contains so much air that when it hits the surface of the model, it's already dry. This results in a very rough sandpaper-like finish. Looking at the cutaway of this airbrush, you can see that there's a central portion to the spray pattern in a peripheral area that is made up of too little paint and too much air. By their very nature, airbrushes designed for small patterns have a very small central portion and the user controls the overspray by bringing the airbrush very close to the surface. However, what happens when you attempt to use that type of airbrush to cover a large area? You move the airbrush further from the subject and attempt to spray more material, but the design of the airbrush doesn't allow for a concentrated pattern of wet material. In these examples, using a common small airbrush, it takes forever to cover the surface and you notice how dry the paint is. Little wonder why many modelers are frustrated with their primer coat. After what you've seen, how easy do you think it would be to create an extremely smooth gloss finish like this with one of these ultra-fine airbrushes? Smooth application of paint over a broad area requires a different sort of airbrush. Here are a couple of my favorites. The Iwata HP BE2 and the Iwata Custom TH. The HP uses a 0.8 mm tip, and the TH uses a 0.5 mm tip. But my all-time favorite is the Iwata RG2 with a 0.6 mm tip. I like this airbrush because of the ergonomics and the large paint cup. The RG2 has been replaced with the updated RG3. These airbrushes are designed to deliver more material so that the central portion is much larger minimizing the peripheral overspray at a normal distance from the surface. So let's take a look at how they work.
Notice how wet the surface remains until the application is complete and then the material flashes off. This way we're spraying paint, not dust. So after final application, you can actually see a sheen to the primer, leaving you with very little sanding. As a side note, just changing to a larger tip won't give you the results shown here. If you look at these airbrushes, you can see that the heads are different. That is because there are a number of design differences that are necessary to deliver a large volume of extremely well atomized material. So no matter what type of primer or base coat that you apply, you might want to consider that your next airbrush purchase will be one that can apply an ultra smooth coat of material over a large area, rather than another airbrush that lets you sign your name or draw a smiley.